Does evolution have a chance? Christians are often challenged to provide evidence for the existence of a creator God. I believe one of those evidences comes in the area of mathematics, specifically probability. Now probability is the measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. In other words, what we're talking about here is chance. What are the chances of an event to occur? Now we use probabilities in many areas of our life. For example, probability is used in insurance companies. It's used in advertising companies. We see it all the time in gambling casinos. And it's also part of the evolutionary process. Now here's the contrast we're talking about. The evolution worldview teaches as a fact that given enough time, molecules can evolve into a man. However, the Bible clearly teaches that God is the creator of all things. In other words, God created all life after its kind. So these two are in contrast. In other words, the two, both of these cannot be true. I believe we can use the area of probability to help us determine which one, creation and evolution, better matches reality or better matches what we actually observe out there. To do this, we'll use the origin of life, the first living cell. And to help illustrate this, we'll use just one of the components of a cell called a protein. Now, proteins are made up of what we call amino acids. Amino acids bond together to make biological proteins. So what we need to look at are the parameters that are involved in the formation of a single protein. And that will help us understand some of the probabilities involved in getting a single living cell. Now, one of these parameters is called the type of amino acids that are used in making proteins. There's over 300 different types of amino acids out there, but only 20 are used in life. That means life is very selective. If we get one of these wrong amino acids, the protein may not function properly. It could be very damaging to our bodies. A second probability problem deals with the shape of the amino acids. Amino acids come in two shapes. We call them left-handed amino acids and right-handed amino acids. And like our hands, they are mirror images of each other. Now here's the problem. Only left-handed amino acids are used in life. Right-handed ones are not used in life. So there's a second probability problem. The third problem deals with the order. These amino acids cannot be lined up in just any random order. They have to be in a very specific order so that protein can fold a specific way and perform its function. So the three problems we have here, number one, we can only use 20 of the over 300 amino acids that are available. Of those 20, we can only use the left-handed versions, and then they all must be in the correct order or that protein may not function properly. Now, the human body is made up of all these cells which are made up of proteins. Proteins come in various sizes. They range in size from about 50 amino acids to over 30,000 amino acids. Now, if we were to take an, just a very small protein, say a protein of about 100 amino acids, I'm going to ask, what is the probability of that very small protein occurring by random chance processes? That probability would be 1 in 10 to the 130th power. That's 1 followed by 130 zeros. To help illustrate that, that immensity of that problem, if we were to flip a coin and we wanted to get heads all the time, for example, we wanted to flip a coin and get heads 100 times in a row, what would be that probability? How often would we have to flip that coin? In order to achieve this, we'd have to flip that coin 300 million times a second for over one quadrillion years. That's an immense problem for evolution to overcome, just to get a protein of 100 amino acids. Now, the human body is made up of about 60 trillion cells. How long would it take to assemble 60 trillion cells at one per minute? And that turns out to be about 114 million years. But that doesn't account for getting them in the right order. If we had to get them all in the right order, that would far surpass the evolutionary time frame of billions and billions of years. Now, when we go back to the human body. It is a tremendously complex organ, tremendously complex. For example, in our human body, we have about 40 billion capillaries. Those are the smallest of the blood vessels. If we were to take all those capillaries and line them all up, that would be about 25,000 miles long. We also have a heart that beats about 100,000 times a day. We have red blood cells that transport oxygen to our body. We have white blood cells that identify enemy agents in our body. We have eyes and ears that are more complex than any man-made machine. And we have a brain that has about 100 trillion connections in it. Now, if we were to take all 60 trillion of these cells and look at the probability of assembling all 60 trillion of these cells to form all these very specific complex organs, 
that all interwork together in the evolutionary time frame of 3.8 billion years, I think that probability would be beyond our comprehension. I believe that probability is a wonderful tool for showing that there indeed exists an all-powerful, all-knowing Creator God who tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made and also tells us in Romans 1, 19 and 20 that He has given us all the evidence for a Creator God and we have no excuse.